everybody, my name is Eli. I'm Jason. I'm Caden. I'm Jaden. And we are the Yahoo and the Tour YouTube channel. We are very glad you can join us. We are very happy to have you here as part of our digital family that is also learning the Torah. That is what we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be reciting the Torah when we get up with our families, and we can see you as our family. So thank you guys for joining us. Thanks for taking your time out of your day to learn the Torah, learn what was written on those tablets so many years ago, and uh, learn what, what we're supposed to do today. Yes, and we must take every moment in life as an opportunity and thank Yah for every last moment that we have. And I've told a lot of people this before, and I, I don't know if anyone actually understands exactly what 10 Pitbulls has in a house. And I guess we ended up with 10 Pitbulls because Cade, long, like, what, five, six years ago? How old was it? Six years ago or something. We had two pit bulls. We had three pit bulls, total three. And um, a mother, a, a father, and a, another half pit, Jerry. And uh, Cade left the door open. And so we ended up with a pack. We ended up with seven more dogs. And we didn't, we didn't know anything about raising pit bulls, really. I mean, we did have one pit bull we raised, uh, I think, what, how old was Rock? Nine. Nine years old. So we had a pit bull. He, he was nine years old, and we loved Rock. He was, and we would never get any other dogs other than pit bulls. So I guess our problem is is that we fell in love with these little puppies, and everybody fell in love with them. And they from the very beginning, they've always been lap dogs, and they've been, they've been our family. I guess if you want to say that there was a secondary family, this is it, and they live with us. They dine with us. They uh, they they live their their entire lives. They're, we're we're right next to them at all times, but they require full time babysitting. And we have things that we say like, "Don't trigger the pack." And um, you know, I'll knock on these guys' skulls, and I'm like, "Whatever you do, don't trigger the pack." And there's a lot of ways you could trigger a pack. And I mean, literally dropping a chunk of chicken on the ground when the pack is sitting there eating could trigger the pack. It could be very bad. We do things in a, I don't know, almost like a prison style method. And um, sometimes things get out of hand. Sometimes it becomes dangerous. And when I say that if you guys appreciate one, what we're doing here, um, it's, not, it's not a forever thing. Like there is, we ran into an incident yesterday and um, I'm actually, I'm not able to use my hands anymore. I'm not able to use, I have two fingers left. I literally have two fingers on one hand. And um, we were in the back room, or Jaden was in the back room, and he was clinging. And I'll tell you something about it. You guys have probably never been, I'm just telling you from experience, you've probably never been in this. If you've ever been in a real fight, and those who have been in a real fight will understand that there, there's moments of the fight that you can remember, and then the longer the fight goes, the way you don't remember anything anymore. The same applies for this trauma with the pit bull. And so, Jade, explain how what you, what you remember from from this. So I was cleaning out a tub. One of the dogs was back there sniffing, Panthro. And Lionel came back there. He was kind of happy, so I started petting him. I told him to go back to the living room, and all of a sudden, a, a fight started. And but this is where we failed completely is... Um, it's got to be a contained pack. You got to contain the pack, right? You can't let them. You, you, you open the doors. You let them out when they go to the bathroom. You follow them out with the bathroom. If they're outside, you're outside with them. If you're inside, you're inside with them. You just don't let them go. And the problem is, every once in a while, we have some mice, and it's it's never been a tremendously good experience when we have mice, um, because these things will will shred them and they will fight over them and. Um, you know, if it's just, I don't know if it's forces of darkness or demons or things of this nature, but there's always been a, uh, an attack against this family. And the more that we do the Torah, the more it feels like certain things cripple us. And this is one of them. We're, we're, we're entirely crippled today because of my main priority. My main job anymore is babysitting the dog. So the rest of the family can go about our tasks that we have all day long. And there's 10 dogs. And so sometimes it takes one person to babysit. Sometimes it takes two, depending on the situation. Sometimes it takes three. Sometimes it takes four. Yesterday, it took five. And so we have a little guy, this little gray one. We call him Tubby Tiger. And somehow he jumped up on a, what we have. One of the main alpha males here was Mr. Bubs. And they start duking it out. And I wasn't in the fight yet. So Jaden was, Jaden was fighting them out. Nicole... I guess made it to the fight before I even knew the fight was there. Somehow she got Tubby Tiger into another room, at which point Panthro and Mr. Bubs, who are always at odds with each other, they broke into it 
when I made it to it, Mr. Bubs had his full mouth clamped over the top mouth of Panthro. And um, it was only Jaden and I. I couldn't remember it. And so as, as we're talking about this, the, 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 it all fades very quickly. Nothing to do. They were clamped on and they were going violent. And so I dove right into their mouths. I didn't dive on this time. I just grabbed a hold of Mr. Bubs. I ripped his mouth open. And it was, this is the first time there's, there's a myth about pit bulls. People are like, ah, oh, you know, they're, they're locked jaws or that, you know, once they lock on, you can't get them up. And that is a myth. Um, you can definitely rip them up. But here's the problem is there's an actual art to fighting pit bulls and, or dogs, dogs in general. And it, it always starts with tails. You got to pull the tails away. You got to have more than one person to do this. And I fought dogs before, like these dogs, um, when there was nobody in the yard but me. And so it ended up with me fighting a couple of dogs. Then the problem in lies is when you break them up. They have other dogs. They get all excited. It's like the thrill of the fight. And it is probably one of the most stressful situations ever. So as I was pulling up Mr. Bubs' mouth, we were unable to pull them apart because it was only Jaden and I at that point. And so Mr. Bubs clamped down on my hand four times. I remember four or five times it just went pop, 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 pop. And my hands were in his mouth. And so I have about 20 or so my, my entire hand, my, my entire left hand is black and blue. I have no use of, I have use of two fingers on my left hand. My, my right hand is just, it's all jacked up. And um, I don't remember exactly how it went other than at some point Nicole came back after getting rid of Tubby Tiger into a room. Eli was there with our tasers. We have tasers. I mean, we have an actual battle array that we fight the dogs with when this happens. And it does not happen enough that we, it's, it happens odd times, very, very odd times. And it's usually when we are trying or we're headstrong into Torah or we're, we're, you know, the demons are really trying to take us out. There was really no cause for that fight yesterday. There, there was really no reason. And they've been calm for a very, very long time. So, um, as much as Barkley laughs at that, uh, you know, uh, dog bite, I am, I'm like literally crippled. My hands are completely turning black and blue and I have no use in my left hand. Mine is my two fingers and it really hurts to move that. And Jade got owned somewhere in his hand. Um, the dogs for the most part, Mr. Bubs lost a tooth and that's unfortunate, but, um, he is the alpha. So I hope he loses all his teeth and then I would have less bites on my hand and like this, but there's, um, you know, there's a courage, I guess, of boss clan or either stupidity or a courage. And, you know, we, we keep asking ourselves, why didn't we get rid of the dogs? And, you know, I keep thinking of our dogs leaving and these dogs that have been with us that they literally sleep with the boys. Three, three dogs sleep with one boy, three dogs sleep with another one, two dogs sleep with another one. And we have a couple that are roaming out and they've just they're a part of our family. And I, I don't know any other reason that we do what we do other than we love these things and they are our family and I would never give up on my my human family and I'm trying not to give up on my dog family so this is the probably the worst I don't know if it's the worst but I've had worse bites I think the one I got one in the wrist a while ago like a year ago or something but that, that one hurt pretty bad that one disabled my right hand but I've never been both hands disabled so I will not be running this I will have Eli sitting here being my little uh, tonto on this he will be my sidekick and again, this is the life of Boss Clan. So um, as you guys are reading the Torah, if for some reason you guys never ever hear from us again, when we've had some kind of terrible tragedy, it could kind of go out like that. Um, we will try to update everyone and let everyone know where we are at, what we are doing. But as far as like, do I know that I will be able to rise up in the morning and all of us will be alive? We live in the middle of a very violent jungle with a bunch of violent pit bulls who we love with all our hearts. And, and for the 99.99% of the time, the pit bulls are very nice dogs. They're very good. They're very calm. And it, I do believe unclean spirits will use them and get in them along with all of us, right? I, I see unclean spirits in all of us at certain times. And we must absolutely plead the blood of Yahushua and um, beg for forgiveness, but you know, uh, I don't have, I have two fingers left and I will say praise to Yah that I am able to use that because I was able to feed myself this morning and everything else. I, I couldn't put my shoes on. My wife had to put my shoes on. She had to put my pants on. Uh, it's a mess, right? And uh, I'm one of those dudes who uh, you can't, don't, don't help me out of anything. I, I don't want help. I want to do this myself, even if I have two nubs left. And um, it is wild. So this is the life of Boss Clan. And I'm just telling you guys these stories because these, I don't know if you'll ever hear stuff like this where people have this kind of dogs, you know, you'll hear somebody has 10 dogs, but they're all chained up and they're all different places, but actually having them in a family 
and keeping them uh, without killing them, you know, the other 99% of the time, it, it's, it's about love and it's about tremendous amounts of love. And we love these dogs and it's literally a full-time job for me these days to pet the dogs, love the dogs, tend to the dogs. And you know, they're, they're like little human beings. So that's it. That's the end of the dog story. Eli, let's get ready to ramp up on this. We haven't had any commandments. Um, and again, thank you guys, everybody for spending this time with us and for doing, uh, you know, spending time with the, Yah, the will of Yah. And it, in the event that you don't ever hear from us again, we would encourage you guys that you guys continue on in this, right? We are, we're, this isn't, you know, we're doing a Bible study together, but this is something that everybody can do. You guys can all look through the commandments and, you know, never, ever, ever take your eyes off Yah. Even if boss clan is, is gone, you, you, we don't post for whatever, whenever, um, Never, ever take your eyes off Yah. That's the most important thing. That's the only thing that matters. And, um, you know, especially in the time that we are in. All right, gentlemen. Everyone good? Anyone have anything to add? Good. Enough. Everyone's real silent. This family's crushed. We are all crushed this morning. Stressful. Stressful, yeah. Stress. Beyond stress. I mean, this, you know, you want to talk about PTSD with soldiers and things like that. In the five years we've had these pit bulls, I believe all of us have some level of PTSD. And, as, as, you know, as pit bulls live 10 to 12 years, and as these pits start dying off, it's going to break our hearts. But with every pit that probably dies as, as the pain dwells and goes away, it will probably become a little bit of, of freedom to us. And so I, I, it's just a weird life that we ended up in. And it is what it is. So let's continue on. Exodus 39, all glory and power to Yah. All right, where are we at, Kate? What, what's going on right here? What, are we, what did we just do? So last chapter, we built the ark, or the altar. We, then we, before that, we built the ark and the tabernacle and the tent of appointment. We had all those built. They put all the stuff. They overlaid all of it in gold. They made a specialty according to how the design was supposed to be made. We made the, uh, the menorahs, the uh, lampstands. Yep. All special with the, knobs. With the knobs and uh, knobs. the flowers, knobs, <laughs> <laughs> however you guys want to call it. Um, we had all these special utensils, basically all the priestly stuff. Everything was overlaid in gold, silver, and bronze, all the special colors. And now we're getting into more of the, I believe, which is more of the ark or the altar. It's, it's the, more, the this garments. is a priestly garments and what they call the ephod. And I, I will tell you, I, I don't know what that means. Does anyone know uh, I think the ephod is the headpiece. The headpiece, oh, okay. All right, let's begin. Exodus 39. And of the blue and purple and scarlet, they made cloths of service to do service in the holy place and made the holy garments for Aaron as Yahuwah, my little sidekick got me, as Yahuwah commanded Moshe. Here, I'll use my one nub. Here. I, I, just can't, I can't hold it down. <laughs> and he made the ephod of gold, blue and purple and scarlet and fine twined linen. And they did beat the gold into thin plates and cut it into wires to work it in the blue and in the purple and in the scarlet and in the fine linen with cunning work. All right, mine said threads, not wires. Okay, so what does it say? Cut it into wires. So it must wires, be... Wires, you think of like a metal wire What does it say in the king? King's usually what it... It's wires. Wires, yeah. So this is real close. Wires, too. Wires, mine yeah. Mine says threads. Oh, yeah. Well, threads... Threads makes more. more sense. I mean, we're making clothes, not metal. Oh. Yep. They made shoulder pieces for it to couple it together. By the two edges was it coupled together. And the belt of his ephod... So there's... What's the... Ephod, is that the hat? Shoulder, shoulder garment. garment. Okay, so the uh, so the the belt of his is say shoulder garment. Shoulder garment. Okay, so ephod is a shoulder garment, and the belt of his shoulder garment that was up on it was of the same, according to the work thereof, of gold, blue, and purple, and scarlet, and fine twined linen, as Yahuwah commanded Moshe. And they wrought onyx stones enclosed in ouches of gold, graven as signets are graven with the names of the children of Yahuwah, Yashrael. Sorry, what are the what are the uh, ouches on yours again? Engraved as signets. Plate. Signets. Right. Engraved them like a seal in the NIV. Uh, so <laughs> placed in a... Enclosed in ouches is what it says of gold. Placed in plated work okay. of gold. It says that they mounted the onyx stones in gold filigree filigree settings and engraved them like a seal. Okay. Um, I don't know exactly what we're reading, but I'm not seeing a command yet. And he put them on the shoulders of the ephod, and they should be stones for memorial to the children of Yashrael as Yahuwah commanded Moshe. And he made the breastplate of cunning work, like the work of the ephod of gold, blue, and purple, and scarlet, and fine twined linen. It was four square. They made the breastplate double. A span was the length thereof, and a span the breadth thereof being doubled. And they set it in four rows of stones. The first row was a sardis, a topaz, a, and a carbuncle. And this was the first row. 
Uh, what are you guys laughing at the carbuncle? Carbuncle, man, I just. <laughs> what does it say? What did you guys emerald. say? Emerald. Emerald. <laughs> All right. Uh, so. NIV is different. So, don't ever tell your the woman to be, hey baby, I got you a carbuncle, <laughs> and it's an emerald. <laughs> okay. And the second row, an emerald, a sapphire, and a diamond. And the third row, a ligure, a ligure, an agote, and an amethyst. Do you guys have anything other than that? Adjacent so, is the what's the third row? The, yeah, the, the third row is a ligure. Leg year. Jason. Yeah. Jason. Jason. Okay. Gate. All right. In the fourth row, a barrel, an onyx, and a jasper. They were enclosed in ouches of gold in their enclosings. Related so. work of gold. Okay. Thank you. And the stones. Eli, you're killing me here. Yeah. Killing me, Smalls. Okay. And the stones were according to the names of the children of Yashrael. Twelve according to their names, like the engravings of a signet. Everyone with his name according to the twelve tribes. And they made upon the breastplate chains at the ends of wreathen work of pure gold. And they made two ouches of gold and two gold rings and put the two rings into the two ends of the breastplate. So this one says mountings of gold. So ouches is settings. Ouches is what Aaron should have got after making the golden golden calf. He should have yeah, got man. spanked <laughs> a couple ouches. <laughs> made the show him stones on his shoulders just a little bigger. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> carry that one. Okay, and they put the two wreathen chains of gold and the two rings on the ends of the breastplate. And the two ends of the wreathen chains they fastened in the two ouches, or yours it says what? Settings. Two mountains settings, mountings, and put them on the shoulder pieces of the ephod before it. And they made two rings of gold and put them on the two ends of the breastplate upon the border of it, which was on the side of the ephod inward. And they made two other gold rings and put them on the two sides of the ephod underneath toward the fore part of it, over against the other coupling thereof, above the belt of the ephod. And they did bind the breastplate by his rings unto the rings of the ephod with a lace of blue that it might be above the belt of the ephod and that the breastplate might not be loosened from the ephod as Yahuwah commanded Yah- Moshe. All right. Again, what color What color is Yah's favorite color? Blue. Blue. blue purple or scarlet. Purple, yeah. Okay. Uh, 22. Yep. And he made the robe of the ephod of woven work, all of blue. And there was a hole in the midst of the robe as a hole of a habergian. Habergian? You guys got anything for Co- me? Opening of a collar. Oh, the yeah, collar. opening in scaled armor. What should we call the collar? Let's call it the Habergian. Oh, okay. All right. With a band round about the hole that it should not rend. And they made upon the hems of the robe pomegranates of blue and purple and scarlet and twined linen. And they made bales of pure gold and put the bales between the pomegranates upon the hem of the robe round about between the pomegranates. A bell and a pomegranate, a bell and a pomegranate, round about the hem of the robe to minister in as Yahuwah commanded Moshe. And again, gentlemen, why does he have a bell on him? Why do he have bells? Uh, it's a sacrifice. They know if he's alive or dead. Yeah, see if he messed stuff up, right? And if so, he stops making sounds, he's dead. He's dead, yeah. Grab the rope and pull his legs out. Don't go in there. You know, and that's the thing. They had a, I believe they had a rope tied to them at some level, I believe. Um, else, I don't know how somebody would go get them. Okay. And they made coats of fine linen of woven work for Aaron and his sons, and a turban of fine linen, and goodly bonnets of fine linen, and linen breeches of fine twined linen. How's your bonnet? What's your, what are you saying yours? Turban. Okay. Turban. turban. Yep. And a belt of fine twined linen, and blue, and purple, and scarlet, of needlework, as Yahuwah commanded Moshe. And they made the plate of the holy crown of pure gold, and wrote upon it a writing, like to the engravings of a signet, Kodesh el Yahuwah. You know, and that as we as we see all this stuff, holiness to Yahuwah, Kadesh El Yahuwah, as we see all of this, and we are supposed to be wearing zit seats, right? And you know Yah's favorite colors, right? Simply put, if you think about this and all of these colorings and all this stuff in the temple and that, you would know this is Yah's place, right? Okay, it's blue, purple, scarlet. You would also know that people walking around with their zit seats are Yah's people, right? Oh, okay. Right. And the Jews, the Judaism people, they have pure white zit seats, right? They refuse to put blue in it like the commandment of, what is it, number 1638? 1538. 1538, right. So it's amazing and it's essential that when you guys walk around, when everyone does, I, I believe zit seats are for men and women and for everybody. If you are a child of the Most High, you should be wearing zit seats. And you are, you are walking around with the mark of Yah on you. It's, and so it's really amazing. All right, 31. And they tied unto it a lace of blue to fasten it on high upon the turban as Yahuwah commanded Moshe. Thus was all the work of the tabernacle of the tent of the assembly finished. And all the children of Yashrael did according to all that Yahuwah commanded Moshe. So did they. And they brought the tabernacle unto El Moshe, the tent and all his furniture, his tatches, his boards, his bars, and his pillars and his sockets. 
And the covering of ram skin dyed red, and the covering of antelope skins, and the veil of the covering, the ark of the testimony, and the staves thereof, and the mercy seat, the table, and all the vessels thereof, and the showbread, the pure menorah, with the lamps thereof, even with the lamps to be set in order, and all the vessels thereof, and the oil for the light, and the golden altar, and the anointing oil, and the sweet incense, and the hanging for the tabernacle door, the brazen altar, it says brass in yours, guys? Bronze. Bronze, all right. The brazen altar and his grate of brass. It's interesting, it says brass there, but it says brazen. <laughs> I think that might be burned. Brass, perhaps. Right. Um, and his grate of brass, his staves and all his vessels, the laver and his foot. The hangings of the court, his pillars and his sockets, and the hanging for the court gate, his cords and his pins, and all the vessels of the service of the tabernacle for the tent of the assembly. The cloths of service to do service in the holy place and the holy garments for Aaron, the priest, and his son's garments to minister in the priest's office, according to all that Yahuwah commanded Moshe. So the children of Yashrael made all the work. And Moshe did look upon the work, and behold, they had done it as Yahuwah had commanded, even so they had done it, and Moshe blessed them. All right, gentlemen, um, that uh, concludes this. I see no commandments here. Anyone yeah, have any commandments? Still nothing. Still nothing, right? We're a little dry on commandments here. Um, oh, hey, for everybody out there that is um, suffering detox from coffee, look, it, what was yesterday? Day? Nine, I think. Day, Ten. Day, day nine for you. Day nine for me after my gluttonous nine cups of coffee a day. And yesterday I had zero headaches. So it literally took like nine days to ever feel normal and ever feel good. And um, so yeah, that's what we have so we will, um, we will go ahead and wrap this up. And um, if you guys do not get responses probably from me for like a week, it is simply because I can't, I can't even hold my tablet. I can't even hit buttons. I can't do anything to it. So it is, it is pretty much game over for me, and I, I love to sit and respond. So if you guys get responses, it will definitely be from Nicole or for the boys and things of that nature. Um, I will miss you guys, and I, unfortunately, I, this is the best I got. Anyone have anything else? No. Not much. Just read your Bibles. Anyone want dog fight today? No. No. No, please. Yeah. No, definitely not. No, don't ask for that. No, no, we're not asking for that. And uh, it is uh, it is unfortunate what happens. And uh, I guess everything is in y'all's hands, including, you know, you had, there's, I don't know so much as if you would be able to have another family that was equipped enough. And I don't even know if we're equipped. We're crazy at this, to equipped to deal with pit bulls like this. So I know that we have the messengers of Yahuwah that are here. And even though we all get a little bit up, a little chopped up and things of that nature, we're not dead yet. And um, like always, if, if for whatever reason, Boss Clan doesn't get back up here and we don't get the Yahoo and the Torah going, this is on you guys, right? This is, this is we're passing on the, the relay stick. And um, I hope at one point we will all meet each other in the Shimaim and give you guys huge grizzly hugs, high fives, and just congratulate you guys all because it, it has been a crazy road it has definitely been a crazy road and, and it's only going to get crazier for all of us so the powers that be do not have anything well intended for us and so we must power on and endure to the end and that is very important all right so with that everybody i would like to bid everybody goodbye all right shalom shalom, shalom. all right have a good day we are out